Let's move on to some statistics questions. But before we do, let me just say a few general words about statistics. Often when I'm meeting with a new student for the first time, this is the topic that they want to go over. And the reason for that is a lot of the non-official prep books, not the official guide, but the non-official ones, I'm not going to name names, but you know who they are, uh, make a big deal about statistics on their, on their practice material. Permutations, combinations, um, uh, probability, that sort of thing. But the amount of statistics problems that you'll see in those non-official books is not really representative of what you're going to see on the test. There will be statistics questions on the test and they will be pretty hard. But you're probably only going to get one, maybe two of them per section. That's it. So if you're going for a very high score, you're aiming for you know, a top MBA program and you need something in the 160 plus zone, it's important to understand these question types, the statistics questions. But if you're just looking for a like a 150 or even a mid to high 150s, I would say you should probably prioritize everything else before you look at this. This is kind of the cherry on top, the very last problem type you should worry about. With that said, let's talk about some standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is an interesting concept. Um, if you've taken a statistics class, you might be familiar with it. What's interesting on the GRE is that they want you to understand the concept, but you don't need to know how to calculate it. So I'm going to give you a very quick rundown of the concept right now, and then we'll try this, this problem right here. So let's take a set of numbers. We'll ignore this problem for now. We're just uh, demonstrating this. Let's take a set of numbers. Uh, 3, 5, and 7, right? Let's take another set of numbers. Uh, 1, 5, and 9. Compare this set to this set, and what can you say is the difference? Well, set number 2, this one, is more spread out, right? Uh, the, the average of both these sets and the median, the middle number is 5, but this one is kind of tighter, right? It's, it's grouped around the center, whereas this one is more far-flung. So for now, that's all I'm going to give you about what standard deviation is. There is a formula. I invite you to look it up. It's terribly messy and you don't need to know it. But what I'm saying is the standard deviation of this set is higher than the standard deviation of that set because it's more spread out. So pause the video right now and try this one out. Okay, set A consists of five distinct non-zero numbers. All of the numbers in set A are halved, that's cut in half, to produce set B. We want to know what's greater here. The standard deviation of set A or the standard deviation of set B. Well, on quantitative comparison, it's always a good habit to just try something out, right? Try a set of numbers out. So let's pick five distinct non-zero numbers. I'm going to say negative 4, negative 2, uh, 2, positive 2, and uh, four and maybe six, right? And I'm, I'm using even numbers because I'm about to cut these in half. So this is set A. Set A consists of these five numbers, negative four, negative two, uh, two, four, and six. Set B is everything here divided by two. So that's gonna be negative two, negative one, one, two, and three. Now let's compare these two lists to each other. And if you want to, a good, a good, uh, trick here would be to, to draw these out on number lines. If I draw all these numbers out on a number line and I draw all these numbers out on a, a different number line, which one is going to be more far flung? That is, which one's going to be more spread out? Well, clearly this one, right? Clearly the first one. By having, cutting in half all the numbers, I've, I've kind of sucked them into the middle. So negative two, negative one, one, two, and three are much more closely clustered than these ones are. So the correct answer here is quantity A. Uh, the standard deviation of the first set is greater. Now, if this all feels a little loosey-goosey, it's because I'm doing my best to avoid having you memorize the standard deviation formula, right? Um, it, it's so complicated and so convoluted 
that I would not even mess with it. But if you're in for a little bit of tough math, you're free to look it up on your own. Now, standard deviation does come up in one other context, that of the normal distribution. And if you're not familiar with normal distribution, let's talk about it a little bit right here. Normally distributed data follows a particular uh, pattern, that of the bell curve. I'll sketch a bell curve for us right there, and there we go. So this drawing right here is, is a bell curve, and again, what it is, is a way of representing the data from an experiment or a study. In this particular distribution, we can see that most uh, observations land right here around the center. The further away from the center we go, the less likely that particular outcome. So let's, let's use concrete numbers here with, a, with an actual example. Why don't we talk about the, um, the average height of an American male, which I would guess is something around, I don't know, five foot nine. And if you're on the, uh, the metric system, apologies, but hey, why don't you use this and, and turn it into another extra little math problem for conversion? So we'll say that it's, it's five foot nine, right? Five foot nine inches. Now, an important feature of this normal distribution, this bell curve, is that the average is also dead center. It's the median, right? The average of the distribution is the median or the middle point of this. Um, now, in these problems, they will give you a number for standard deviation. Again, I know I'm, I'm leaving you a little bit in the dark because I'm not telling you how to calculate the number for standard deviation. Once again, look it up if you're, if you're so inclined, but they will give it to you. They'll say something like, hey, the, the uh, standard deviation of this set of data, I'll say SD, is going to be um, four inches, right? The standard deviation of this set of data, if I lined up all the uh, American males in one line and calculated the standard deviation, it's four, comes out to four inches. Here's where you go from there. You go from the center, right? The, the, uh, the median or the av and the average height is 5'9". What's four inches above 5'9"? Well, it's six foot one. Six foot one inch. That's a distance of four inches. And then let's go down four inches, right? That's gonna be five foot five, also four inches. Within one standard deviation of the middle, I'm going to see 34, approximately 34% 34 of the observations. This is true for any normal distribution. I'm not just pulling these numbers out of thin air. These are observed in nature, right? 34% of people, or in our case, 34% of American men are going to be somewhere between five foot nine and six foot one. 34% are going to be somewhere between five foot five and five foot nine. And then we go out another four inches. Boom. What's four inches above six one? Well, it's six foot five. Out here, the number is 14%. Once again, not random numbers, just observed in nature. But if you want to get these problems right, you have to memorize these values, 34, 14, and what comes next. Uh, so then we'll go down another four inches uh, to five foot one, right? 14% of American men are going to be in this zone. And um, out we go one more, right? Uh, four, four more inches out, which is going to be six foot nine. Six foot nine inches. And that's another four inches. One more standard deviation. Uh, and that's going to be about 2%. These are all approximate numbers, right? And that's going to be about 2%, uh, four more inches down. So what's that? Um, uh, four foot seven right? Four more inches. Because that's four inches. And then one more uh, down here at four foot seven is also going to be four inches. And that's about a little under 
Now, if you add up these numbers, you'll notice they add up to 100%, but we know, right, it's very possible to be taller than six foot nine or shorter than four foot seven. That's basically outside of this, outside of the third standard deviation. So if we're counting here from the center, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, we're talking about fractions of a percent, right? It's a very, very small amount of people. They exist, but it's very, very, very small amount of uh, the population lands, lands in these zones. So again, this graph, I'm just telling you, is something to memorize not the numbers on the bottom here, right? Because these are particular to our example, but 2, 14, 34, 34, 14, and 2. Every standard deviation captures a particular, uh, a particular percent of the people. One last thing I want to emphasize here. This is only applicable to a problem where it tells you that you have a normal distribution. Just saying, if the problem just says standard deviation, that's not enough. You have to know, the problem has to tell you that it's normally distributed to do this. It's a very particular case. So with that, try this one out. Pause the video and give it a shot. In Sunnydale, the height of garden lawn gnomes is normally distributed. There's that term. With an average height of 15 inches and a standard deviation of 2 inches. If a gnome is randomly selected, what is the approximate probability that its height is between 13 and 19 inches? Okay, well, the minute we see this term normally distributed, we're going to draw a bell curve, right, as always. And we're told that the average, what we know now, the middle, right, is going to be right there at 15 inches. And uh, if the standard deviation is 2 inches, so I'll write in standard deviation equals 2 inches, I can quickly fill out the rest of this graph. Right, so there's 15 inches. Two inches above that is 17 inches. That's a difference of two inches. One standard deviation. So 34%. One standard deviation above that is going to be 19 inches. That's one standard deviation or two inches. When they say the standard deviation is two inches, they're saying one standard deviation, right? One unit of standard deviation is two inches up. So that's 14% right there. Two inches above that is going to be 21. And as we know, that's going to be about 2%. All right. And then we can do the same thing on the way down. That's going to be 13 because that's two below there, two inches. That's going to be 11. 11 right there. That's two inches. And that's going to be 9. And there's 2 inches below that. And we can fill in these. 34%, 14%, and 2%. And the question is, what's the probability if I select a gnome in, from this distribution, right? Remember, this distribution accounts for 100% of the people uh, in, this, in this curve right here. Uh, what's the um, probability that if I select a gnome at random, its height is going to be between 13 and 19. Well, there's 13 inches right there, and there's 19 inches right there. So all we have to do is add up the percents. 34, 34, 68, plus 14 gives us 82%. I realize this is not super intuitive, and I'm not really going into the weeds about uh, normal distribution and standard deviation. But take it from me that these problems are very, very formulaic. And if you just know this distribution, if you know this graph and the associated numbers, you will be fine.